friends, good evening and welcome to another midweek Vesper service. A time we set aside during the week to gather in spirit as we find rest in the reading of Holy Scripture, meditating upon God's Word, offering up a song, and spending time in prayer. So friends, let us gather this evening for worship. As throughout the week, we need a moment to reorient ourselves, to reground ourselves, to be renewed and refilled with God's promises of love, compassion, forgiveness, and life that we are able to pass on to one another. So let us worship God this evening. Would you please join me in these opening sentences? Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church and the world. Friends, there is one body and one spirit. And just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in all. Thanks be to God. Friends, we light candles this evening to remind us of the gift of light. But we also lift up a candle in an act of self-reflection, reminding ourselves that we lift up to God those things that we mourn, the things that we grieve, the things that we are holding on to and struggling to let go. But we also light a candle this evening to remind us of the new life, the Easter resurrection hope that is found in Christ Jesus. So let us this evening give thanks for the gift of light. Friends, the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, creator and ruler of the universe. You made the lights of the heavens, the sun and the day to brighten and warm the earth, the moon at night and the countless stars. You gave us these lights as signs for seasons, days, months and years. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ to be the light of the world the morning star that never fades. Let your light illumine our lives and enlighten our path until we may rest in perpetual light through Christ Jesus our Lord and in communion of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us now enter into a moment of song this evening, where we may lift up to God the things on our hearts and a word of song. So please enjoy this meditation.
Our scripture lesson this evening comes to us from the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verses 1 to 10. So listen now to this reading from God's holy word using the message translation of scripture. Paul came first to Derbe, then Lystra. He found a disciple there by the name of Timothy, son of a devout Jewish mother and Greek father. Friends in Lystra and Iconium all said that what a fine young man he was. Paul wanted to recruit him for their mission, but first took him aside and made him in a fashion that would be more acceptable to the Jews, for they knew that his father was Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they presented the simple guidelines the Jerusalem apostles and leaders had come up with. That turned out to be most helpful. Day after day, the congregations became stronger in faith and larger in size. They went to Phrygia and then on through the region of Galatia. Their plan was to turn west into Asia province, but the Spirit blocked that route. So they went to Mycenae and tried to go forth to Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus wouldn't let them go there either. Proceeding through Mycenae, they went down to the seaport of Troas. That night, Paul had a dream. A Macedonian stood on the far shore calling across the sea, saying, come over to Macedonia. Well, all the pieces had come together, and we knew now for sure that God had called us to preach the good news to the Europeans. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you please pray with me this evening? Almighty God, this evening as we lift up the meditations of our hearts and minds, we ask that your spirit dwell, or that we may feel your spirit dwelling with us, to give us rest, to give us hope. This evening, as we come before you with one another, may we find a sacred rest in the love that you pour out upon each and every one of us. Amen. As I think about this reading from the book of Acts, I think that the Apostle Paul must have been at his wit's end, near the end of his patience, as he tried to discern which way God was calling him to go. Luke, who is often attributed with the book of Acts, tells us that Paul was traveling with this group and they tried to head into Asia, but the Spirit of God prevented them. So then we find that they tried to go north into some other regions as well, but each time they were stopped. The Spirit of God blocked their path. Who knows what really happened? Who knows what really kept them from going to where it is they wanted to? Perhaps roads were washed out. They were flooded. Perhaps a massive conflict broke out in the region that kept them from traveling safely through. Perhaps there were warring tribes or bandits or broken bridges. All we know, though, is that by the time Paul made it down to Troas, things were not looking particularly good for Paul. I wonder what was going through his mind as he began to settle in for that night in a small town such as Troas. Because what we have to understand, or what we have to know, really, is that Troas, well, there was nothing great about it. Troas was this little backwater town that was on the sea. 
There's nothing fancy about Troas. And so I wonder what Paul was thinking as he prepared himself for the night. Perhaps Paul was questioning his calling. Perhaps Paul was asking himself a lot of things, as we might do in his position. After all, he had been called by God. God had called Paul to go and be out in the world to bring the good news. But I'm sure that as Paul looked up towards the heavens, he asked himself, why did you send me here, God? Who among us have ever found themselves in a place like Troas? Because Troas is the last place we ever thought we would end up. It is a place that we associate with failure and disbelief. It is the place, if we were going to use some blunt vernacular, it's the place where losers go. What good could come out from Troas? It is in the town of Troas where we grapple with the hardships of life. Perhaps Troas is the place that reminds us of that job we didn't get or a job we lost. Perhaps it is a place that reminds us of a school that we didn't get into. Perhaps Troas, or maybe Troas, is the place that reminds us of a broken relationship or a past hurt that we just can't seem to let go of. Perhaps Troas is the place where we lay awake at night wondering what good, what meaning can come out of such unpleasantness. How do we end up in a place like Troas in the first place? And what good, if any, can come out of Troas? And where is God's Holy Spirit taking us when we think that Troas is all we can look forward to at the end of our long journey. That is a question we need to ask ourselves. But this story of Troas, this story of Paul trying to go to A and B and C and, and not having any luck, that's something that we find occurring time and time again throughout Scripture. It's not new, whether it be Moses, Sarah, whether it be a whole multitude of people from the Old and the New Testaments. We as human beings, we like to make plans, for the most part. I'm, not all plans are fun. But we like to know what's going to happen. We like to lay out each step of the way, knowing that there is a place where we can ground ourselves. That is not always the case. We know that life can be messy, that it can be dangerous. So how will we navigate in those moments? How will we move, live, and have our being when we find that we end up in a place like Troas? I think that as we look at this passage, as we look at Paul's missionary journey, the one that does bring him to Europe, there's lots for us to be reminded of. Like I said, it is a story that has been told countless times. And that is why it is important for us to recognize that as we go throughout these perilous times, there are people who we should be able to rely on. Paul wasn't traveling alone. 
he had Timothy, and I'm sure that he had other disciples or followers with him who were just as equally frustrated. Frustrated with what was going on. But when we look back and as we think about what these frustrations really mean, in many ways there is an opening, an opportunity for us to lean hard into the unknown. The unknown that is a place filled with the promises and the love of God. It's not always going to be clear and clean cut. It's not always going to be something that is obvious to us. In our lives, I'm sure that you know that some of the moments that we have experienced, perhaps some of the better moments that we have experienced, have happened because we didn't plan, or we had plans and they were changed. Friends, we don't know what today, what tomorrow, what the day after tomorrow is going to bring. But we do know that in the moments when we feel blocked, that in the moments where it feels like we aren't making any progress, the Spirit of God is there with us. And that it is asking, calling us to pray. Calling us to pray in a way where we are willing to take a new look at something. We see that towards the end of the scripture reading, that Paul, as he finally goes to sleep, has a dream. He has a dream of someone on the other side in a place called Macedonia calling out to him saying, come, come to Macedonia. Bring the good news here. So from that small seaport town, from a vision, Paul and his companions knew what they had to do. And it is what brought them to Europe, and to many other places that God was ultimately leading them to. As we continue on in this season of pandemic, of this season of uncertainty, I'm sure that our plans right now, they've gone way past letters. I'm sure that we're now into letter number combinations. But wherever we are in this moment, wherever we find ourselves, let us not lose hope. Let us not lose faith in one another or in God. Knowing that God is with us every step of the way. So let us be open to the new possibilities that may arise that lead us from a small town that's not very significant, such as Troas, to a place for a moment in time where we were truly meant to be. So friends, this evening, may our hearts be open. May our minds be open. May our spirits be open to where it is God is leading us today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, would you please now join me in a word of prayer?
Let my prayer rise before you as incense, O Lord, the lifting of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Give us your peace, O God, that we may rejoice in your goodness to us and to all your children, and to be thankful for your love revealed in Jesus Christ. We give you thanks especially for the witness of Christian people who throughout the world bring glory and honor to your holy name. Those women and men in various ministries, those who serve your local church, that in living out lives that are reflective of your love and your grace and your compassion, bring the message of good news. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the vast universe of galaxies and stars. That as we look up to the heavens, we may be inspired. That we may continue to ask the larger questions of life. Questions that challenge us. Questions that inspire us. Questions that allow us to strive to see what is around the corner. We give you thanks for friends with whom we have shared the joys and the sorrows of life, for all the various things that we have gone through. That as we live, move, and have our being, we find that in these holy bonds of friends and those in community with us, that our lives are shared with one another. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the labor of those who have served us in whatever capacity, whether it be medicine or essential goods and services for those who teach us. Lord, we lift all of them up to you. O Lord, grant us your peace that we may be confident of your care for us and all your children. O oh Lord, as we practice what it means to pray, we pray now in a moment of silence the things that are on your hearts. But we especially lift up prayers, O oh Lord, for justice and reconciliation, for those who are poor or vulnerable, for those who are agents of caring and relief, for those who help others who are neglected or abused. As we lift all these up in prayer, O oh Lord, let us now in a moment of silence in which we can commune with you, lift up the things that are on our hearts this evening. God, our shepherd, you have brought us through this day to a time of reflection and rest. Calm our souls and refresh us with your peace. Keep us close to Christ and draw us closer to one another in the bonds of his wondrous love. We pray this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And let us now say the prayer Christ Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, may the grace of our Lord, who is our peace, 
Give us peace at all times and in every way. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord's name be forever praised. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Friends, go in peace. Safely to have at home, let us hope that I could pleasure safely to.